great planning. I love the use. I love the connectability between the thing. I hear the joke about, are we going to have bike lanes? Well, shit. Just built the damn bike lanes and they're up to the right-hand turn lane. It's already a traffic hazard already. Joe can dodge a few cars going right-hand side. <laughs> There's no place to put the bike lanes when you take away the entire right-hand turn lane. And I'm hoping, since I got three members of the city council here already, and I've made some phone calls with some people, Lenny says it's okay. Steve Bush says it's okay. We became a city because we got sick of DeKalb County telling us it's okay. We got sick of the county attorney standing up and going, he's right. You guys are going to have to sue us if you don't like it anymore. This isn't zoning. This is zoning closer to home, but it sure isn't help better zoning. We have a chance to take control of our major north-south artery that goes into the city. We have a chance to control the traffic that's going into that. And anybody in this room doesn't believe a right hand in or a right hand let out is not going to further delay the traffic congestion on that road, has never driven this road at 5 o'clock. Okay? And the city has no right, in my opinion, has no right to give up public road for a private traffic calming device and public road for a private traffic calming <coughs> device that serves a 140 room hotel. If they want to do this, then move it inside. Let them use their property for the Excel D cell lane. Make them use their property for this triangle. Make them use their property for the bump out. All right, Bob. I haven't seen that yet. I know, but now your presentation is long. Yeah, but I don't get to go. And you, you way used up Alan's seconds. five seconds. <laughs> um, Dan, if you would just, uh, I guess my question is, we do have that agreement with the developer from 2008. If you would address that, because it certainly does not allow for a curb cut. Yeah, and just for the record, I mean, I know Bob's passionate about this. We've had this debate ongoing for a couple months now, so it's not like it. Uh, you know, this is the first time I've heard it, but. You know, we have our position on this right-of-way deed. It is a property right. It has value. It was awarded to uh, you know this property owner in exchange for taking valuable land. I mean, this county could have come and said, "Here's a million dollars." Which and I, I get that, but also in 2008, ticket. we have a signed agreement that says no curb cuts. It was approved for a site plan. Correct. So at that point, the property owner waived his right to assert his ability to put a curb cut in, but didn't or reserved it rather, but didn't waive it. It's still a right he has. That's the position I've taken, and we've talked to the city attorney about it, and I think that's ultimately what Bob is getting at. The community council wasn't asking me, is this legal? Can we do this? They were asking the city attorney, and he explained it, I thought, in a pretty impressive way. I've, I've not dealt with him. <clears throat> I was impressed by his ability to understand property rights issues, reporting issues, and things of that nature. I, he gave the right answer, and gave the answer that I thought was correct. So the reality is, it's something we can assert. It does require going back to the zoning process, because this is a judicial zoning, but it's something we're entitled to. It's a property right. If it's taken away, it has to be compensated for. No, it that's, doesn't. That's the position that the city That is did. wrong. That's you not gave right. up that right by the legislative act, and the only way you can get it back is to change the legislative act on this property, and that is rezoning it. Without a rezoning of that property, which grants you that curb cut back, okay, the legislative action on that property shows no curb cut. And you can argue this all the way to court if you want to, want, if you want to and that's fine. But the position of the city and the position of the DHA should not be one that goes, oh, it's theirs by right. If it's theirs by right, then why does anybody in this room agree to approve any development per a site plan if at any time a developer can reach in his pocket and go, well, back in 1979, you know, Mrs. Spruill told me I could use her driveway. Well, I've been doing this a long time. I've never seen anybody pull anything like this out of the back pocket. Before. Well, regardless of what the legal ramifications are, etc., based on what Bob just said and just common sense, how does this make any sense for anyone but the retailers there? Yeah. You know, and, and I appreciate you getting back to that, because I think that that's ultimately what, what we need to get to. We can debate the legal point all day, and, you know, I don't like to debate those kind of things in places like this, because it raises the L to me of the Because the it, common sense tells me Bob's right, and it's just going to hold up traffic and make a big mess of the situation. Well, let me, number one, you know, suggest everybody in this room read the traffic impact study. You can say what you want about them, but, you know, 
I can tell you this guy stamped these drawings as a professional. You know, you can read into his uh, credibility all you want, but I have faith in the guy. You paid him. Here's the point that he tried to make, and they studied the intersections and the places that the city told them to do. They designed a traffic study, and the point was to see whether the uses on the site would impact the level of service at the intersections they asked us to look at, and they won't. And here's the main reason why, because the types of uses proposed for the site are compatible. They have peak times at different, at different times of the day. For, so for example, you know, retail is busiest at a different time than the restaurant's busiest, and the restaurant's busiest at a different time than the hotel is busiest. And the hotel's busiest at a different time than the, than the office spaces. So, you know, this is not everybody showing up at one time in the morning and everybody leaving at one time at, at night. There but aren't is, you cutting a lane of traffic at uh, uh, 24 hours a day? Well, first of all, there's a small deceleration lane here that we're bringing back to allow cars to get out of the main roadway and take it right into our property. We back this up to, according to the traffic engineer, provide sufficient stacking space for this right into the property to service these folks who live back here and the folks who use uh, this entrance, which frankly is for the office building and will be going forward. So, you know, this bump out is intended to direct traffic away from this right in, and it's designed in a way, I think actually this design may change a little bit. Bob Dallas had a good suggestion that I took back to the traffic engineer to straighten it out. So the cars, once they get past this pedestrian crossing, will actually stop here. You know, they won't gather speed and try and, you know, circle back into the traffic at speed. They'll actually have to stop and wait for an opening. So, you know, there's nothing unusual about this. We've actually studied every intersection in the, in the city of Dunwoody, and there are numerous examples of this exact situation that have functioned for decades. Name one, please. McDonald's at uh, Perimeter Center East and Ashland Dunwoody Road. That's not decades. Well, I, I zoned that. I can tell you it's, it's a decade. Okay. Yeah, but who, who, who's right? Who's right? Perimeter Mall, that old area, the 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 uh, property across the street at Park Place, those right of ways to make the right XL lanes and D-cell lanes coming in and out of those properties were not done on existing city right of ways and existing city roadways. And you this are taking a lane of road away from the city so you can have act easy in, easy in and easy out for 140 room hotel. That, that's not exactly true. First of all, we are backing up this desell lane onto our property and extending it, number one. Number two, there's about two cars worth of stacking here. You ought to know this because you live right there. If you come out here, there's space for two cars to stop, make a U-turn and come back. We're actually extending this stacking lane so that it will serve this site, which it doesn't do now and hasn't done forever. So, Greg, Greg, did you have a question? I, I mean, I've got many, I don't know, 175,000 Hilton points, and most of those are on the Hampton Inn. i got to tell you, going around a half a block to get into the Hampton Inn, as a frequent user, one of your target target um, market type people, going around the corner and coming in the backside is not going to make me stop going to Hampton Inn. Well, I'll tell you and, going, stop. and going and going out the same way. I mean, I've been to Hampton Inns where they're two miles from the road, through three parking lots, and I still go there. I don't well, know. I don't know what. I, I'll what both ways. I'm trying to get what I don't understand from you is what you think the intrinsic economic value of that right turn lane is because I don't see it other than its convenience for that. We're not going to get these tenants without this right and right out access. It's as simple as that. Oh, these go. tenants have told us they're not coming to the site. And you know, you talk about what you want in 2008, that site didn't get built. And they they're, 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 they're the wrong hotel. tenants. Well, because I've been at Hampton Inns again with, without parcels. I'm not talking about Hampton line. Inn, number one. I, mean, I think this is crazy. You've got an 11 and a half acre site with one right in access here and one full access in the back. You know, I'm thinking about me. I stay in Hampton Inn in, 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 in suites all the time, too. I've stayed in one in Charlotte in the last, twice in the last three or four months. In fact, I stayed in one two nights after I presented the first time. But regardless, I'm a newcomer here. I'm driving along. You know, I see that hotel. How in the world do I get over there? I mean, you know, it seems crazy to me, number one, to have to stop. You know, slow down on National Dunwoody Road, try and figure it out, number one. But number two, this is also designed to serve the retail tenants along the front of the restaurant because they need more access than the hotel itself. And, you know, that's, it also allows us to frankly do some more interesting things on this site, like creating this Grand Boulevard, like creating hardscape on opposite sides, like creating, you know, internal sidewalks and things of that nature. So, yeah. Do you remember uh, 40 years ago in America, a place called Main Street, USA? They were just shops up on a street, and you parked in back. You walked around the block, and you parked in back block. That's how it worked 40 years ago. 
It could still work today. That's exactly how this site's designed to work. We brought the buildings to the front, the parkings in the back, there's pedestrian walkways here. I'll tell you what I remember 40 years ago. I remember Dunwoody, because I'm from here, all right? And I've seen change here, and there was nothing like this then. We're going back to recreate this, and there are examples in the city that are replete of old 1980s development that we're trying to get away from. What you're talking about, we're trying to get with one curb cut on a three football field long uh, stretch of roadway. So, you know, I can tell you this, I, there's some heat in this room on this, Bob's heated about it, but for the most part, when I've asked people about it, outside of, you know, heated conversations with you two guys, most people are like, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I'm probably because most people didn't get hit detailed intellectual analysis, and maybe if they did, they'd be like, hey, that's a good point, go around. Well, I, so that's not fair for you to just say, oh, most people, we don't know unless someone gives us both sides. Well, okay. we've, given, we've got a traffic engineer who's done a detailed analysis of the actually what's going to happen. I've got a zone in my pocket that says we can build exactly the same thing without the there. Okay, i got a gut one thing. Um, I will say I was on the Transportation Planning Committee, and that probably would not pass the smell test. If, 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 With, if, and if we had our, you know, the city paid traffic engineers would probably not agree with your traffic engineers on there. But what type of um, retailers are you saying we're not, are going to pull out or are not going to sign? Well, we have a tenant, a potential tenant here, who's okay. told us this is not, they're not coming. And their so name is what? So one. So why are you saying all of them? I mean, okay. well, my, my point is you talked about the traffic engineer saying that the hotel isn't going to cause much traffic in and out. But those retailers certainly will. No, the traffic engineer studied all of these uses. The hotel, but what type the of retailers were retail. they? What type of retailers did they study? Well, they use IT data that's based on general retail, banking. I mean, there are different categories that they use. So we didn't tell them this is going to be a, you know, a gap. It was the bank. You know, he uses right. data. You know, we told him what type of restaurant we think. This, this will be a white table cost, steakhouse type restaurant that you know, doesn't serve breakfast. Okay? So they're not open in the morning. These retailers, you know, you don't, my wife doesn't go buy jeans at 8 a.m., okay? No, but they These do it at rush at hour coming back when the northbound traffic Well, maybe work. so, but this data has been studied. I mean, there are manuals that they use to generate this, and we okay. submit it to the city. It's going to be reviewed by okay. their traffic okay. engineers. And, I, and then I'd like to know, other than density, and I understand economics, and I understand development. I think a compromise here, you have your curb cut, but do what Bob says on your land totally push all those retails back 15 feet and redo the thing. And if your, your square footage has to be reduced by 10%, so be it. Then the city has the lanes it always had, and you're providing any lanes you need on your property, as Bob's saying. Push the whole thing back 15 feet to the right, as we're looking, or east, as we know it is, and have your curb cut that way. But it's in an, on your land, this way, you're getting to maximize everything, and your cake and eat it too, and the only one that suffers is everybody else that lives in Dunwoody. And what kind of a neighbor is that? Yeah. <coughs> well, why aren't you trying to find out a win-win here, as opposed to sell us why you have to have, because the traffic engineer said, I guess we can squeeze it in this way. No, no, one's, no one's brought that up to me before tonight. We'll, we'll talk about that. I've, I've never heard that idea until right now. You never, you've never mentioned that to me before. And, and the traffic engineer wasn't designed, you know, we didn't tell him to go, you know, put this eyebrow on the right of way. You know, we oh, I understand all of that, but it is a fact. Bob's done an excellent, in my opinion, presentation, that you're taking the city right away. You should be doing everything you need to have done and changed on your land. And you could do the same concept, but push it 15 feet to the right. Why don't you redo it and come back to us at some future time? Alan? Uh, I'll get my time back later then because I was going to make the same suggestion. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. We're getting right away for this project. I, mean, I don't understand the relationship. We'll give 15 that. feet more. <laughs> All right, Bill had a question. Uh, Dan, yeah, the argument you made earlier uh, regarding the tenant mix is appropriate regarding the number of parking spaces you might need at any given time. It really has nothing to do with a curb cut. I've never seen a traffic study paid for by a developer that didn't support the developer's program. Well, of course, that's because the ones that I that didn't support it, I'll never see. Uh, retailers, of course, would like improved access. They would prefer that we cut all the trees along the that might be in the way as well, so people can see their store easier. They'd like us to be able to put up signs that they, everybody can see from 285, but. We don't necessarily allow that either. 
Well, number one, uh, we didn't want to do the traffic study. We fought like crazy not to do it. It's something the city requires us to do. So we sent them some of the